Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome back to Democracy 4 in the United States. We are playing as the Futurist Party and we are about to go into a glorious election year. Of course, the economy just took a bit of a nosedive due to a flash crash we weren't expecting. I probably could have regulations on automatic computerized trading and that would solve some of those, but that's okay. The GDP is actually still fine and we still have a surplus regardless. So, I'm sorry, are you serious? A 30% drop in the GDP did nothing? Ridiculous. Speed limits. This would make motorists happy if we were to raise the speed limits. Um, okay. CO2 emissions rise a tiny bit. Parents are unhappy. Motorists like it. Meh. I'm okay with it. I was kind of hoping that maybe increasing the speed limits was going to reduce traffic congestion just because, you know, people are able to get around a lot faster, but apparently that is not the case. So if the GDP didn't actually flash, then all my plans as far as helping to reduce environmental issues um, were for nothing. The good news is water shortage is about to go away and food prices are going to drop by like 45%. The bad news is that's going to result in a lot more obesity all of a sudden unexpectedly, but there you go. Uh, making progress on respiratory disease. It's starting to get there, and the more this fixes itself, the more the parents are going to eventually like me. Pollution is all is about to go away. We're officially going to be done with smog in the United States, thanks to my efforts. I'm a god! Alright, this is good. This is very good. So with this gone, environmentalists will love me. Health will go up, tourism will go up, etc., etc. Environmental membership will drop a lot. Because uh, people don't feel like they need to be environmentalists because everything's looking hunky-dory and they become complacent. That's how it works, but that's fine. Um, environment should still be doing okay, though. Let's see. Yep, the environment is still ticking way, way up because car emission limits are just that OP. I should have done that as, like, one of my first, like, two years kind of a project. That would have been so good. I don't know why I didn't figure that. I'm an idiot. Why are you watching me? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Uh, school vouchers. Should we do this? Poverty goes down, everyone's income goes up, private schools goes up, equality goes up. Creates capitalists, too. Let's do it. Now, we're not going to do a lot. We're going to do a very small amount of vouchers, okay? You get, you get like, 200 bucks to buy school supplies or something like that. That's all we're doing. Private schools goes up by um, a whopping 2%. <laughs> this isn't worth it at all. You really want to do a big one. Like, if you can do a lot, like, you once you get to about this point, we're talking some serious private schoolage. And socialist membership just plummets. Income doesn't actually matter, and equality doesn't actually matter, though. You really got to go to the max levels, and then it costs, like, $172 billion, which is a lot. I'm not looking to do that. I just want to experiment and have a little bit of fun with this. We're doing some school vouchers, dang it. It's a thing. It's good. Um, automation tax. Now, I think this could be okay. The biggest issue with the automation tax is it does increase the ba brain drain and the corporate exodus, which is generally pretty darn bad. Those are events that can absolutely wreck your economy. Hoping not to have to deal with this. Driverless cars. Nah. Da -da -da -da. Recreational drugs. Do we have recreational drugs? In the United States. Hang on. It'll be under law and order, right? Uh, let's see it. Where is it? Drugs? Drugs? There's drugs. Wait a minute. It's under welfare instead. Hang on. Narcotics law. There you are. We have legalized cannabis all across the United States? That ain't true. You're lying to me. That ain't true at all. What if we legalized more? Aw, oh, we can't go to the next threshold. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, these blue lines are the actual thresholds. Legalize LSD. Good lord. People actually want to do that, too. Um, we could reduce legal drug consumption. What is this doing? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to change anything. Can we go to this place? Legal drug consumption. Alcohol consumption goes down because they have a different drug. Health goes down. Productivity goes down. Not as impactful as I would have expected, given that about a fourth of our... Sorry, not fourth. About 40% of our population is currently uh, taking some form of drugs, but okay. Huh. Um, what's this? Social care. What the heck is this? This is new. Package of policies providing care directly to those who need it from the state. Ugh. You can reduce healthcare demand by just taking care of the old people yourself with the state. Fun. Um, not by a lot, though, and it's extremely expensive for that purpose, so no. Not touching that. Um, what about... We've already done that. What about tobacco taxes? We were talking about raising taxes here to try and reduce tobacco usage a little bit. I'm going to do this um, because... Not, not that I need the money, but because I'm trying to reduce tobacco usage a bit more. And uh, that should speed up the drop in respiratory disease a little bit. Primarily, it's being driven just by the effects in the environment right now. And pretty much nothing else. Okay, uh, that's all we can really afford to do, so let's move on into the next turn. Pollution is at an end, and the water shortage is at an end. Thank you, Lord! 
All right, that's all really, really good. We got rid of this nastiness. We fixed, we fixed America, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, America's been fixed. Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. United Nations, it, that's not capitalized? It should be United Nations as a proper noun. Is pushing for your country to sign a treaty that would ban us from carrying out any nuclear weapons tests for research purposes. Uh, I don't know. Have our rivals done this as well? Because if not, I say no. Um, we can sign the treaty. It'll upset the uh, it'll upset the patriots, but it will make the environmentalists happy. And given that they make up like eighty percent of our population, this is probably a win for me. So we'll sign the treaty. Patriots don't like it, but overall, this was actually they don't care that much. Formulations goes up too. This is a very good choice. Okay, the game is trying to teach me that it is always worth signing the nuclear ban treaty. All right, what's this? Welfare fraud? Oh. We've seen that before. No, I'm not going to worry about that. What's this one? Press freedom. Press freedom? Mm, I don't like press freedom. No, we do. This is actually really good for me. Um, it only costs like six political capital. It gets more liberalism, too. Yeah, I mean, this is good. It improves democracy and reduces corruption. Not that corruption's really been that of much of an issue up to this point. Um, but the lower corruption is, the more trustworthy we appear to be. I don't know. It's pretty good. Judicial independence also increases liberalism. I mean, if you're looking to create more liberals, generally speaking, one of the best things you can do is um, go to the law and order and really start messing with this a bit. It tends to work pretty well. Intellectual property rights are extremely well protected in the United States. Holy crap. I was looking for Bitcoin. I looked at the wrong thing. That's copyright. Where is, um, where is our... I don't see it. There it is. Internet currency adoption. So... This impacts corporate taxes. So the more internet currency there is, the less money we get in income tax, sales tax, and corporation tax. So you don't want people to use internet currency. There's no upside? Huh. That doesn't seem great. Um, okay, and then, yeah, passing things like more sales tax and income taxes and stuff will drive people to the internet currency. Fascinating. Not worried about that, though. Um, what do we want? It's a good question. I don't feel like we need anything, honestly. We are kind of in a really good spot. The environmental protests are still going to go away. The economy will continue to get worse. The real estate bubble has just been sort of hovering. Shy of reducing population further, I don't think there's much we can do about that. Hmm. Eco-home regulations. Nah, I already talked about that. That doesn't help me any at all. Human cloning, that's surprisingly, does not impact population. Lifespan uh, from organ donation, usually very good, except it creates more population. Needle exchange program, really upsets conservatives, really makes liberals happy. Have we succeeded in our goal of making liberals the primary demographic? They are pretty darn good, actually. 71% of the population believe in freedom. That's good. That's good. I don't know. Uh, I mean, this is pretty good. Um, if I wanted health. I think actually one thing I would really like is to find a way to start reducing unemployment. It's a little bit too high right now. What is driving unemployment? Let's actually take a look at that. That's under economy, I think. Yes, this one right here. Okay. Unemployment's a little bit too high for me. The Climate Change Adaption Fund, we actually could reduce this by a threshold. It hasn't quite reached full inertia, but we can save ourselves some money. So we're going to do this and save myself, like, $30 billion. So let's use some political capital to do that. And then... Immigration... is super high and creating unemployment. Arguably, we could reduce... immigration a bit. What's our ethnic uh, minorities look like? Oh my god! We did it again! <laughs> I'm sorry, I broke the game. We saw this with our Canadian playthrough. We made the economy so prosperous that ethnic minorities took over literally the entire population. Oh, I take that back. I'm sorry. 0.25% of the population is white in the USA. <laughs> That's always been weird. There needs to be some more cap on this. Jeez. That's way too crazy. Immigration being maxed out should not do that. Oh, my God. All right, let's reduce immigration a little bit. Just like out of, I don't know. Just out of principle on that a little bit. Not that it's a problem for lots of ethnic minorities. I'm not saying that. That's not the issue. It's just like... I've, I've always thought this is a weird gamey system. In, um... 
It's always a very gamey system in, uh, in Democracy 3. Same thing going on here. We can reduce immigration by a pretty huge amount if we wanted to go for armed guards. I like immigration. It's a good thing. But it's a little silly, right? That said, I mean, one could argue, one could argue that if you're going to have extremely high populations of ethnic minorities, you should make them as happy as possible. I don't know. We're just going to we're going to ramp this up just a little bit. Just just a little bit. Cuz it's funny. Cuz it's weird. And um welfare fraud department, you know, I don't want to do this. Nah, let's just save our political capital and move on to the next turn. Internationally, uh, international, sorry. Literary Award. It is hilarious that as I'm saying International Literary Award, I just missaid that as Internationary. Oh god, my brain. Okay, a local writer has won the most prestigious International Literary Award for their novel. The story is set in our country and has raised the nation's profile across the world. Oh! This is like, um... Oh gosh, what's his name? Clavel? Is that it? There's a book called Shogun, okay? And it's a book, uh, it, it's based around, um... Uh, not quite medieval Japan, but more like just when Japan is getting out of that medieval era and starting to get inf impacted by colonialism and the uh, the coming of the English and the Spanish and the, the Portuguese, etc., etc. Christianity starting to spread, etc. It's a very interesting book, although I don't recommend it for young audiences because there's some fairly adult themes in it. But supposedly that book was so stinking popular and famous that it resulted in a massive boost in tourism for Japan. Massive. That's kind of funny. Kind of funny. All right. Well, um, hmm. We have exactly 328 million members of the Futurist Party. Did you know that? What's this about Justin Trudeau? At one point, people are going to have to realize that maybe I know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. He may know what he's doing. I just wanted to joke at him. Uh, okay, what else we want to do? Well, synthetic meat research. We got lots of money. This makes farmers upset and go away, but I don't care. Food prices drop. Environmentalists don't like this? This is better. This is better than farming all the critters. I'm open to this one. Okay, even on none, it still upsets a lot of people. All right, admittedly, this was a mistake. I should not have done this. We're going to set this on none. Um, I just wanted to play with it and have fun with it. Okay, never mind. That used up all my political capital. Turns out it's a very expensive policy. That's fine. Moving on. Whining and dining the media. Cyber warfare is gone. Good. People realize they like me. Oh, illegal immigration amnesty. Huh. Everyone knows we have illegal immigrants in our country. A proposal has been put that we should offer existing immigrants an amnesty and welcome them as proper citizens who can work and pay tax like anybody else. Ah, uh, this right here. That is, that is, that is a hot-button issue. I don't know. I've had fluctuating opinions on this. Uh, on one hand, I mean, it's, it's a violation of sovereignty. It is illegal, and therefore these are people who maybe for completely good reasons as far as, like, their own pursuit of, like... Uh, betterment and more prosperity. They are still flaunting your laws. Maybe the laws shouldn't exist, but they are. So that's certainly, you know, an issue just from a law and order kind of standpoint. Um, of course, I grew up in Arizona. That's where I spent my formative years, where uh, border immigration and illegal immigration was a pretty hot issue because, you know, there's a, there's a lot of it happening on a border state. So I, I grew up in an environment that was much more hostile to illegal, illegal immigration than a lot of places. I don't know. I'm not sure there is a good solution on this, to be honest. Uh, we've kind of reached a point where amnesty is not going to make things better. It's going to result in more illegal immigration that causes problems. Um, clamping down on them really hard is probably not good either, not to mention it's kind of heartless. There's a lot of nasty ways to deal with this. I'm not sure. I feel like you have to secure the border first, and then maybe you can pursue an amnesty. But if you don't secure that first and then do amnesty, I don't know. What's going to stop more people from coming in, right? So this will make ill uh, not ill immigrants. This is going to make um, God. Why did I just say that? This will make liberals and uh, ethnic minorities happier. There we go. Um, I was trying to reduce immigration, but I think we're just going to go ahead and do it. Patriots hate it. Ethnic minorities love it, and they are literally like 99.9% .9 of the population, so that's a thing. And liberals like this. This suits my demographics very, very well, and doesn't have an impact on immigration itself, which I think is weird, but that's that's how this game's going to do things. All right, fine. Environmental protests still on the way down. How is that environment looking? That was not what I wanted to do. Wait. There you are, environment, down over here. It is still improving, because car emission limits are the best policy in the dang game. Gig economy, still going up. Real estate bubble, not changing anytime soon. Well, what do we want? What's a really cool project we can do? I was going to say maybe like driverless cars or something. Did we already pass driverless cars? Wait a minute. Did we not already pass them? 
Car usage. New car subsidy, cycling. No, we didn't. Huh. Where does one see this? I thought there was a policy specifically about, like, doing grants and stuff for, um, driverless cars, but I, I'm, maybe I'm blind, but I'm not seeing it. No, I don't really know what to do, guys. I, I honestly think we can just coast from here and we're fine. Um, an internet currency tax. Nah. What's something I can do that just makes people like me? Young entrepreneurs. Let's get rid of the socialists! There you go. Oh, we're going to raise the kids right. We're going to raise them on corporate boards until they understand the benefits of capitalism. We could also just make them love me. And that actually reduces... Wow, that's new. Youth club subsidies reduces cyberbullying as well as antisocial behavior. I don't think it used to do that, but that's all right. Crime goes down. Yay! We're doing fluffy things, you know. We're just doing feel-good initiatives. I don't want city farms. And I definitely don't want Labor Day. Labor Day sucks, which is ironic because I'm recording this on Labor Day. <laughs> but... It's a terrible policy, unless you want socialism membership to go up. But, like, it reduces your GDP by, like, 3% for one day out of the year. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. All right, last-minute chances to change things. Tourism ad campaign, already done. What else do we want to do? Don't want to change this. What about citizenship tests? Stronger citizenship tests? Could reduce racial tension and immigration a tiny bit. Make some people unhappy, but I'm all right with it. Let's go ahead and apply. Oh, wait. Here we go. Confirm. There. Okay. I did the thing. We can use one more point. One more point before we have to end this. Uh, we've already done community policing. We're already doing the campaigns. These are campaigns, 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 telecommuting. Did we max out the telecommuting? We did actually max out the telecommuting. What do you know? Uh, business startup. What are these? Work safety laws. Maybe we go for this. This is going to reduce productivity a little bit, and it's going to... Ah, oh, no. Never mind. I don't want people to go to unions. You know what? Forget it. No work safety. No work safety at all. Everyone become more productive and let's get more people uh, self-employed. You're responsible for your own safety in my America. <laughs> all right. Well, electioneering time. Oh, I guess I could have spent some of my political capital making pledges that I literally can't, you know, follow through on because, I mean, we're not getting reelected for a third term, though I think I could at this point. Um, we are trustworthy. We are strong. We are compassionate as frickin' heck. Uh, fundraising is absolutely off the charts. Um, we are making loads of money. We didn't make any speeches or manifestos. Everyone knows. Oh, look at that. Look at the fanatically supportive people. That's a, that's a very consistent set of data. All right, let's move on. So, election time. Do we win? It's the Futurist Party versus the Absolute Unity Party versus the Movement for True Freedom. These guys keep popping up, by the way, as, like, on the sides of the election results and a lot of the other policies I'm doing. Are they supposed to be, like my target demographics or something? Who the heck are they? These are retired to the Patriots. I don't know. Anyway, let's start the count. We are spending $300 million, and they spent 58 combined. My activist boost is massive. All right. We actually got 100% of the vote. I thought the last election was good. But no, we got exactly every single legal voting adult in the United States to become a member of the Futurist Party. We are the definition of a one-party state. Not because the other parties aren't allowed to exist, it's just even their own members aren't a part of their party. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like this should have an impact on, like, corruption potential and maybe, like, a reduction in democracy. You know? No other, like, intellectual debate in the country. We are the only party everything down the line. It's whatever I say. I'm practically the dictator by vote. Oh my god. Break down every single person regardless of demographic has voted for me. Changes over the course of our entire election. Health, by a long shot, the biggest impact that we had majorly fixed the United States healthcare system and that greatly increased the human development index. I actually think that whatever you do, if you want to win in Democracy 4, based on the way it's currently balanced, Fix the Human Development Index, and you'll win. That's really it. People seem to respond well if you actually make their lives noticeably better. In this case, healthcare vouchers. Solve the problem. Lifespan went up. CO2 emissions plummeted. Bus usage is way up. Electric cars, traffic congestion, foreign relations, tourism, immigration, oil demand, and prices went down. 
People are becoming more vegetarian. Prices are down even for that. Human development, 41%. I think we maxed that out. GDP went up by 40% roughly in the last eight years. That's not bad. Productivity, education, car usage. All of this is looking really good. We even have a stronger currency. Air travel went up. I'm surprised by that, but that happens when the GDP goes up. And that's despite me trying to deliberately tamp it down, it still went up. Oh well. The rich are richer. You know, that's a thing. Crime is down. Environment's looking real good. Trade, healthcare demand, poverty, unemployment. Blah, blah, blah. Look at all this stuff. Look at all this stuff. More people have private pensions. Good. They're taking control of their own retirement. People are investing in my country from other countries. That's great. Alcohol consumption, drug consumption went up, but it's fine. It's just, it's, it's only, it's only, it's only cannabis. Average temperature went down. We cooled the planet. We cooled the planet, ladies and gentlemen, America. Man, I'm so good. Gender equality went up. Private housing went up. Energy industry lost a lot of power, but that's fine. We just became extremely energy efficient. The middle earnings lost money, but their health care was so much better. I'm sure they're fine with it. Technology, corruption, stability went up. All this is fine. Generational wealth, wealth gap went down. We actually helped bring the uh, young people up. Or maybe we brought the, rich, the old people down. I don't know which it is. Tobacco usage. Equality went down. So gender equality went up, but equality from like an economic sense uh, went down, which is, you know, sensible. It's not unusual to find that um, when there's huge periods of prosperity, the people who are the best positioned to either use their capital or they have the best set of skills in order to make use of that capital, are being the ones who prosper the most. It always happens whenever there's a huge influx of prosperity, the top, like, you know, so many percents, they kind of prove one of the reasons they're up toward the top. They just start making a lot of extra income. The disproportionate amount, let's say that. So quality going down, no surprise there. Honestly, it doesn't bother me, though. I'm fine with that. Charity, emigration, people left the country? I guess they had enough money, they can go wherever they want. Working week, blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah, we had emigration, but immigration went so up, who cares? Uh, I don't know. Where is immigration? Is it up here? I don't see immigration. Why are they not showing immigration? There it is. I'm sorry. No, it was way up here. 54%! <laughs> uh, we replaced every single uh, person, every single ethnic majority person in the United States with ethnic minorities. At which point, nobody's a majority. I think that's how it works. Nobody's a majority. Yeah, I'll make that work. All right, we're retiring in glory. The Futurist Party wins re-election. You don't say. Well, that was fun. Democracy 4, ladies and gentlemen. Most of it is exactly the same as Democracy 3. Just better, like, in every way. I don't really see any reason why you wouldn't like Democracy 4. It just takes all the stuff that was great, adds more onto it, a more intuitive UI, some really good quality of life changes, and there's more features. Uh, I would love to find out what the meta is going to be to deal with some of those crises, like the gig economy and the real estate bubble, but that's just going to take a lot more practice on my part. If you guys enjoyed this series, I would ask that you hit that like button. It really does help with the search results on YouTube. Leave me some comments, of course, respectfully. And if you guys want to see more Democracy 4 in the future, I am absolutely on board with that idea. Subscribe if you have not already for my future content, including those Democracy 4 series. And I, as always, will see you guys next time.